the Ocarina of Time for Nintendo 64 remains an unforgettable milestone in my gaming journey. It stands as a beacon, the pivotal moment when I first stepped into an expansive, mysterious open world. No specific instructions or a guiding hand to steer me, just an entire realm waiting to be explored. And this singular experience left a huge mark on my gaming soul. From that defining moment, any Zelda game release became a non-negotiable pilgrimage for me, and over the years I've endeavoured to traverse its rich back catalogue. However, there was one era that remained elusive to me, the Nintendo Game Boy. Now back then, the Game Boy was pretty lacklustre with its screen and it was worthless to me. I could scarcely discern the pixels, let alone immerse myself in a game. So consequently, the classics from that bygone era have slipped through my fingers. Perhaps it's this void in my gaming chronicles that has left me unprepared for what many have called a masterpiece. Link's Awakening has undergone a breathtaking visual transformation. The art style reminiscent of a meticulously crafted diorama. There's a plastic sheen upon every tree and shrub, which helps give it this charm that transports a player into a breathtaking, vivid storybook. I admit before picking this game up from my back catalogue, I perceived the aesthetic as more overly whimsical and childlike, very reminiscent of the art style from Animal Crossing. The development team set out with a clear mission, to craft a game that could seamlessly capture the essence of a classic Zelda adventure while infusing it with some fresh, unconventional elements. The adventure takes place far from the familiar realms of Hyrule, the notable absence of Princess Zelda and Ganon, yet an arsenal of weapons and tools that are quintessential to any Zelda title remain at your disposal. You'll uncover a treasure trove of Nintendo references paying homage to iconic figures like Mario. There's even an unexpected cameo by an evil Kirby. As for the puzzles, some are brilliantly designed, however there are others that have not stood the test of time. Challenging even a seasoned Zelda player like myself to consult a guide on a couple of occasions. Even after unveiling the numerous waypoints, you'll find yourself retracing steps without a crystal clear notion of your next move. The phone boxes, while intending to offer hints, I did feel didn't assist and for newcomers like myself, some updated information or more general clues would have been appreciated. As an integral part of its design, the map has sections that are unreachable at first, but in that classic Zelda way, it introduces new abilities. My personal favourite being the hookshot. A couple of mini-games, including the crane game, which is complete bullshit, And the fishing game offer a more chilled break from all the dungeons and backtracking. The music in this game brings me back to a simpler carefree time. Each track is reworked from an original 8-bit mono version and I instantly fell in love. I had to go back and listen to some of the old tracks to fully appreciate the work that went into the original Game Boy game. And just to confirm in my own mind, they actually went to this much trouble back in 1993 to comprise music of this calibre on a machine barely able to replicate it. The final boss fight music ramped things up by about 10, dropping a nice 808 kick drum over the orchestra helping you uncontrollably nod your head through the whole fight. And again, it still holds true to its original conception. It's perhaps the story that I love most, the simple narrative of a giant egg that needs to be woken. After collecting all eight instruments from the various dungeons and tracing the intricate web of events that unearth some profound mysteries, the revelation that the man with the red nose is being catfished pre-Tinder by a goat masquerading as Princess Peach was pretty hilarious. It just added a layer of richness and by the end, the evil force corrupting the Windfish's dream convinced me that it was all just a figment of the dream. And like everyone and everything, if I woke the windfish, they would all die. It really made the final decision to wake the windfish heavy, as you can't totally be sure that they weren't telling you the truth. 
Link's Awakening stands tall as my newfound favourite Zelda story. In an era inundated with remakes and remasters, it's a breath of fresh air to actually play a real remaster, done with an abundance of perfection and care. The very title remaster feels unequivocally warranted here. If you've ever hesitated on picking up an old school top-down Zelda adventure, or after completing Tears of the Kingdom you fill a void, then look no further than Link's Awakening. A true classic.